Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative with another Divi tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make Divi responsive with CSS media queries. So I'm going to cover what those are and how you can use them, how you can actually use the built-in media queries in Divi and then add some additional ones with CSS and how you can put this into practice on your website to make it look great on mobile devices. All right, well, let's get started and show you how to do this. So at some point in your website design journey, as you're playing around with CSS, you're learning CSS, you're going to come across media queries. And these are actually considered advanced CSS. So if you're unfamiliar with them, you know, don't worry too much. Um, by the end of this video, you're going to be a lot more confident and you're going to understand them and know how to use them. So I guess, first of all, what are media queries? Um, a media query is actually, it's a CSS functionality that allows the content of a web page to, to adapt to the type of media being rendered. So in this case, you know, a computer screen or a tablet or a phone is the type of media. So the media query is like a way to compartmentalize the CSS. So we're compartmentalizing it by targeting a specific media type for that compartment. Um, so the thing that we're going to be using the most, the media query is with, but there's other ones. Um, so like in CSS, the media type is usually followed by a media feature and, and you don't need to memorize all this. It'll all make sense once you start seeing it, but media features are, are kind of optional. So basically that would change depending on like the orientation of the device, the resolution, the aspect ratio, width and height. And we're just going to be using width. Okay. And that's, it's the most common and you're going to be able to use this a lot in Divi. Um, in fact, some of our tutorials already have used media queries and I'm going to show you them as well. So when you're talking about this, let's not get confused between um, the viewport width and screen resolution. I got to throw this in there because like, for example, with our Divi responsive helper plugin, so with that plugin, you're able to set a custom preview size in the builder. Like you can see that's happening right here in this presentation. All right. So that's different than the resolution. The preview size is different than the resolution. So let's say, for example, if you had a Pixel 4 smartphone, the resolution is 1080 by 2280, but the viewport size is 411 by 869. So the width is 411. So there's a difference between the device's native resolution and the actual screen resolution, which we're calling screen width or width. All right. So just, I just wanted to point that out right here at the beginning. So first of all, let's understand what CSS breakpoints are in Divi. And actually you're going to, you're going to like, um, if you don't already know this, you're going to have like an aha moment. You're going to see this. So what is a CSS breakpoint? It's another way to refer to media queries. Um, the breakpoint is defined by the media query and the media query is telling the browser how to display the content if it matches certain criteria, right? Well, in our example of what a breakpoint is, the criteria is width. So if it matches a certain width, then that becomes the breakpoint. So I know that can be confusing, but just let's look at what Divi has by default, and I think that's going to help you understand it really good. So by default, Divi comes with three main breakpoints. Now these are hard coded into the theme. These are they're built in and they're represented by three different words: desktop, tablet, and phone. And these are very generic. They're not going to always match your desktop or your tablet or your phone. Um, but they, you know, they're kind of like these average general terms. Now in Divi, the exact sizes are determined by media queries. Just as an example here, if you're in anything in Divi and you click on this phone icon, these are the tabs I'm referring to desktop, tablet, and phone. So desktop is anything above 981 pixels. Okay. So that's a, it's a break point, but it's being set by the media query saying that, you know, anything 981 and above is desktop. Next is tablet, which is 980 to 768 pixels. And then phone is 767 pixels and down. So you can learn more about this in our free course, making Divi responsive. 
You can find that here on YouTube or over on our website at pacreative.com. But most of all, I want to point out that these three things here is how we adjust different settings. So let's say that I wanted to adjust the spacing differently for each device by placing it a setting in here for desktop, a different setting for tablet, and a different setting for phone. Think of it as these three breakpoints are compartments, right, of code. So for each compartment, there's going to be different settings. So you could think of it as a compartment of settings. Each one of these, you could have different settings. And again, check out that free mini course. That's going to explain all this a lot better. So the problem is those three desktop, tablet, and phone things are usually not enough for certain cases. I mean, I shouldn't say usually. Sometimes they're not enough especially as you're learning CSS and you're really getting into web design and you're not just a beginner anymore, but you're kind of tinkering around with CSS and you want to do more, maybe encounter a very specific situation. And we'll show you a couple. Right now we're going to go over how to write a CSS media query. Um, it's pretty easy. So that's just a start and, and let's try to focus. I think you're going to get it really well. So we start with the at symbol and then we say media. This is the at media role. So every media query starts with this. Um, and this is just used to apply, you know, the snippet to a certain type of media. So in our case, again, it's going to be width of the device viewport. So you start with at media. Here's the part where you get to choose this width that we keep talking about. So we're going to be using these terms a lot, min width and max width. So basically I tried to break them down here. Um, min width will equal wider than this size. So if you say min width 981 pixels, well that's the minimum width. So that code's going to apply to everything wider than that size. Or like you remember, desktop. If you say max width, it's anything smaller than that size. So if you say a max width of, you know, 767, it's going to apply to phones and nothing higher than that because that's the maximum width. And you'll get used to using these and I think they'll make sense when, once we start. So we started with at media and then we're going to say um, one of these, either one of these, min width or max width. And here's where we actually put in what we want it to do. So you can go ahead and apply the CSS like normal and we're going to be placing the normal snippets of CSS inside the media query because we only want the code inside of it to apply to these conditions. So let's look at an example. So let's say you wanted to change the font size of your H1 heading text. You wanted it to be 48 pixels on desktop screens, which would be wider than 980, right? So you'd use a media query like this. So you would start with at media, and then inside parentheses, you have min width, and then your value. Okay, so media, min width, 980 pixels. And then you have it starting with a curly bracket. Then after this is where we want to actually apply, um, like we've said, the, the font size. So after the bracket, we go in here and we say something like, and, and this is just an example, ETPB text, that would be targeting a text module. And we say H1, font size, 48 pixels and then we close that one again and then this is how it would look com combined right so we already had this and then we have this and then of course don't forget to end with an extra one there should always be two at the end because this the last one is closing the first one inside of it is the actual CSS snippet but we're compartmentalizing it to only apply on screens 980 pixels and higher okay and there's times where you actually want to add more conditions so here's one for example let's say you wanted something to take effect between two widths you could do something like this media and then again there's parentheses and so you have your your width and your value inside of it so media min width 420 so anything above 420 oh and we're using the word and because we want to add another set of criteria. And then we add the parentheses and our width and value, max width 600. Oh, 
So now we only want this to apply between 420 and up and 600 and down. Okay, so that's where this font size would take place. We want it to change uh, maybe to 36 or something. Okay, so there you can add more conditions. So you may be wondering, well, how do you find that screen size? Um, or is this just an arbitrary guess or what? Well, not really. Um, and in our examples, which we're getting to very soon, you're going to actually be able to see where we, how we got those numbers. I'm going to show you. So the first way to do this is using the browser tools, right? So if I click right clicked, I'm in Chrome. If I clicked inspect and all browsers have something similar. So then I go up here and click on this little icon. It looks like a, well, it looks like the clicker really. And then as you hover over things, it like highlights the thing that you're targeting, right? So let's say, remember I was talking about the H1. This, let's say I want to target this H3. You click on it, and then over here, you can see like right there, for example, it says font size 24 pixels. So I could grab that and change it um, for a width. So how do we get the width? Well, to do that, most again, most browsers will have this. So right next to the, the tool we use to target the items, is something that looks like, I mean, it's the idea is that it's responsive. So something that looks like a tablet, maybe your phone. Okay. So in Chrome, we get this particular thing right up here, some numbers, All right? We can resize this. And as you can see, this number right here is changing and we can use up and down arrows. All right. And we could even go in here and say, oh, I happen to have a pixel two. Oh, there it is 411. Okay. So it automatically will set it or you can put it back to just responsive, which means you can drag it around, okay? So that's how you determine the width. Now you could also do this with our plugin. Remember in our responsive helper plugin, it basically adds what you just saw here, this thing in the tools, it actually adds it to the visual builder. So that's pretty cool. Um, the custom preview size where you can actually fine tune it even down to the pixel, or you can use presets like you can see here. Okay, so you could do one or the other. You could either use the browser tools or you can use our responsive helper plugin or both combined. So next, where to write the media query CSS. And um, you're just gonna wanna put it in your Divi theme options or if you're using a child theme, put it in your child theme style.css file. And you can check out our tutorial where to add custom code in Divi. There's eight different places. Um, it's kind of interesting. That's kind of a complete thorough guide there. You might want to check that out. All right. So now let's get to our examples where we can actually start putting this into practice and visualizing how we can use media queries in Divi. So the first one that I have, and by the way, this is um, a link to all of our tutorials that have the tag of media query. Okay. So right now we have three. As soon as I post this, there'll be a fourth. And these three here are just what I'm talking about with these here. And if you want, you can read about these here, but in this video, we're just gonna actually show you. So we'll just go right on over to the actual tutorials. So what we're trying to do in this tutorial is stop the menu module from overlapping to two lines like that. And we're giving you a couple different methods. Here's one where we add a code snippet. And then here's one where you'll see that there's a media query with a code snippet, okay? So there you go, here's a good example of a media query, and this has a max width of 1366. And in here I was saying, let's say you wanted the spacing to apply on laptops, but not for desktops. And I was just kind of going with the average 1366 for laptop sizes. And this is just something you could start with. So basically we're saying we want to change the spacing on the menu items, the left and right padding, on um, screen sizes that are up to 1366, okay? So that's just an example where we took the snippet up above and we put it inside that media query. Okay, the second example here is when we want to change the mobile menu responsive breakpoint. So basically change the point where it breaks. And again, we have videos on these separately. I'm just showing you the media queries. So let's take a look here. You can see that there's two snippets here. There's one and there's one. 
So this one here is saying to display the mobile menu. And this one's saying to hide the desktop menu. So when do these conditions apply? Well, they apply when the screen is a max width of 1149 pixels. Okay, so from 981 pixels and up, it's gonna have the desktop menu. But what we're saying is, no, we want from 981 to this to actually do the opposite. We want it to um, display the mobile menu for a longer period of time, for a wider width, okay? So that's how you can use a media query there to like change instead of this. Normally this would happen at you know, 980 and down, but we're saying up to 1149 pixels. Okay, so the last one has a couple examples built into it, but how to show a Divi hamburger menu on desktop and then the opposite. So the first one here has a media query of 980 pixels, right? So that makes sense because that's the default breakpoint where the hamburger menu normally changes. But what we're saying is we don't we want it to hide. We want, you know, on screens that are desktop size, so larger than 980, remember the min width means larger than that, we want it to hide the desktop menu. And then again, since we're still in this compartment, right? We're saying we want it to show the mobile menu. So let's just put this into practice. Let's say I would grab this. Let's go over here to a website with a menu. So here we're on desktop, right? And you can see what happens when we switch to mobile, it becomes a hamburger menu. In fact, on tablet, it's still a hamburger menu. So let's go back here to desktop and apply the code. And it becomes a hamburger menu. We're basically saying we want it to apply on wider screens. Okay, so the next one, well, this one here is actually um, showing one of each and you're just, it's just basically adding a class to it. But then the next one is the opposite, okay? So this is when we wanna show the desktop menu, which remember, it's just the one where it actually says the words instead of the hamburger menu. We wanna show that on these small screens. Hmm. Okay, so we add a media query and say max width. So anything below 980, which is going to be tablet and phone, and on those we're saying we want to show the desktop menu and we want to hide the hamburger menu. Okay, so you can see, let's, yeah, let's do it. There you go. And so you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're using these media queries and compartmentalizing CSS. So there's a lot that you can do with media queries. We're kind of just brushing the surface here, um, but hopefully this was helpful. Like I said earlier on, be sure to check out our mini course. It's free. It's on how to make Divi responsive. I think total it's like an hour and a half of time, but it covers all of the settings in Divi. This is kind of like a bonus on the end of that course in a way. So, you know, understanding media queries is like, um, it's not really covered in that course because that's more of like the using Divi, right? But anyway, the course will help you and then this will actually help you go beyond that even. Okay, so that's how you make your Divi websites responsive with CSS and media queries. I hope you guys enjoy that. Be sure to check out our Divi plugin, the Divi Responsive Helper, that's going to solve all of your problems, um, not all of them, but it's going to be make a big difference. And we are really excited about how popular that plugin is and how unique it is, how there's nothing else like it. Be sure to check that out and we'll see you guys in the next video.